Hello, my name is Elliot Grable and I'm a professor at the University of Baltimore. I teach math and I am also a musician. I compose classical music. And today I would like to share with you a lesson that explores the connection between music and math. Today, we'll take a look at rhythm. But first, let's review a little bit of music. The musical staff is a lot like a graph, except instead of plotting points like we would in the rectangular coordinate system, otherwise known as the Cartesian coordinates, we have five lines and four spaces, and that represents our vertical coordinates or the pitch. And then we also have a horizontal axis, which represents time. Now we don't have ordered pairs, right? Not all systems translate, but the X axis tells us the position of the points and we have notes with different shapes that tell us the duration of each note, how long it lasts. And when you have a group of notes with either the same or different lengths, that's called a rhythm. Each of these symbols represents a different length. And unlike numbers, where we just see what the number is, we have to learn each symbol and what they represent. So here's a quick review on what that is. Rhythms are divided up into beats. A quarter note is probably the most common note, and that has a length of one beat. Now, all of these notes above the quarter note have lengths that are longer than a beat. For example, the whole note lasts four beats. The half note lasts two beats. Now, when we see a little dot here, that means that we're going to look at the value of the note without the dot, and we will add half of its value. So for example, this has a value of two, half of two is one, and one plus two is three. So we have a dotted half note has a value of three beats. Let's look at a dotted quarter note, right? A quarter note has a value of one, so half of one is one half. One plus one half is 1.5. And I'm kind of going back and forth here between decimals and fractions. This is a good way of maybe memorizing what decimal corresponds with what fraction. Okay, now let's take a look down here. This looks a little bit more complicated. So an eighth note is half of a quarter note or 0.5, and then a 16th note is half of an eighth note, so 0.25 or one quarter. Then we have a 32nd note, which lasts one eighth of a beat or 0.125. So one beat, half of a beat or one divided by two, and then half of a half or one divided by two squared, and then half of a half of a half, one divided by two cubed or eight, okay? Let's take a look at some of these dotted notes, right? So half of a half is 0 0.25, 0 0.25 plus 0.5 is 0.75. So a dotted eighth note lasts three quarters of a beat. Um, also, we have this thing called a triplet eighth note. So a triplet eighth note lasts a third of a beat. And if you have three triplets, one after the other, that lasts beat. By the way, some of these notes look different depending on context. So if you have one eighth note, it will look like this, or one sixteenth note will look like this. But if you have groups, of eighth notes and 16th notes and 32nd notes, then they are connected together with what's called a beam. A note tells you to play or sing a note, a certain rhythm, a certain pitch. 
a rest tells you when not to play. And it's a very similar system, right? We have whole rests that last four beats. We have eighth rests that last 0.5 or half of a beat. Dots mean that you're gonna take the value of the rest without the dot and add, add half of it, right? So it's a very similar system. If you're not familiar still, you can always refer to this diagram. It tells you the lengths of each beat. So let's take a look at this and analyze what's going on and translate these rhythms into numbers. So for example, each quarter note has a duration of one, right? This half note has a duration of two. Now, when we have the rest, it gets a little bit trickier, right? Duration is the length of time between when you play one note and when you play a note after that. So even though this is a quarter note, it has a duration of two because the quarter note has a duration of one and the quarter rest has a duration of one. One plus one is two. So the amount of time that passes between when I play this note and when I play that note is two, right? Let's take a look at this. This half note has a duration of two. The eighth rest has a, du a duration of one half. Two plus one half is two and a half or 2.5. Look at this. This is an eighth note, but it has a duration of 1.5 because the eighth note has a duration of one half and the quarter rest has a duration of one and one plus 0.5 is 1.5. Now, music is divided into intervals called measures, and each measure has the same length of time. And measures help musicians organize and group different musical phrases together so we can better understand what's happening in the big picture. Now, this has a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. That means that each measure is going to have a duration of Four. Well, not all of them add up to four. This adds up to four. This adds up to 4.5, but if we were to just look at the notes just at this measure alone, it would add up to four. Not all music has a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. It can also have a time signature of 3-4. Think about a waltz. Also a 2-4, if we think about a lot of marches, have 2-4 time. And then we also have strange time signatures like five, four time, seven, eight time, et cetera. Today, we're going to focus just on four, four time. Let's take a look at this program called Super Collider. Super Collider is free software. You can download it off the internet. And it creates some really interesting music. Now, one thing that I like about Super Collider is that you can make music totally from computer coding. So this is a great tool, not just for making music, but also learning how to code. It's not the same thing as C++ or Java. It's its own system, but there are similarities. I don't have all of the time in the world to explain everything about Super Collider, so I'm just going to tell you what you need to know in order to complete this lesson. However, if you would like to learn more about Super Collider, you can check out this book. It's also downloadable for free off the internet, and it's called A Gentle Introduction to Super Collider by Bruno Ruviero. There's a little bit of setup that you're going to have to do with Super Collider. Here we have a list of audio files. You, we've got the bass drum, we've got the cowbell, we've got two cowbells, we've got tambourine, we've got a snare drum. Now I created all of these audio files. The audio files should be available to you in the folder, but you are going to have to tell the computer what audio files to use. Right now, since I'm operating from my computer, 
I'm using a path that only works in my computers. For example, Elliot Grable is my username. When you put these audio files onto your own computer, this might look a little bit different. Let me just show you what you need to do. Before we start with this super collider, we need to take the audio files. Let me just show you what we would do. So this is the Tom. So I'm gonna go here and here's my audio file called Tom's. And I'm just gonna click and drag. And you can see the computer automatically gives me the path of where to look for. You wanna make sure that this path has quotation marks. You also always wanna make sure that there is a semicolon at the end of each of these lines, very much like C++ Java. One last thing before we start to have fun with Super Collider, we need to boot the server. What we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight that and we just press shift return. And a lot of times when we have errors, sometimes the best thing to do is just reboot the server, right? I can go to language and I can do quit interpreter, reboot the interpreter, and then I can also reboot the server. Now we have to tell the computer what audio files to look for. So I'm going to double click right next to this parentheses mark. And you can see everything has been highlighted between this outside parentheses and this parentheses. And I'm just gonna press shift return again, very similar to what I did with s.boot. Now let's play some music. So this is called a P bind. And it's telling me that I'm gonna use instrument A, right, the toms. And this is the rhythm that we're going to tell the toms to play. We're gonna play a quarter note, two quarter notes, then two eighth notes, etc. This string of numbers is surrounded by brackets. And then we have a comma, and the number of 15 tells me how many times I'm gonna play this sequence over again. So I've chosen to play the sequence 15 times. If you wanna change it to like five times, you know, you can change that to a five. Notice here, P-S-E-Q. S-E-Q, that stands for sequence, right? We're gonna play this sequence of notes over and over and over again. And let's hear what this sounds like. One, two, and a three, four, rest. Two, three, four. One, two, and a three, four, rest. Two, three, four. One, two, and a three, four, rest. Two, three, four. And you can see how I've translated the durations here, right? So. This quarter note corresponds to one. Each of these three triplet eighth notes correspond to one of these 0.333 numbers. You can see how these quarter notes have a duration of one, but this quarter note has a duration of two because it's got the rest following it. Now, whenever we wanna stop listening to this, we press command period and that stops it. Let's listen to another example. Here's example two, and this is on the worksheet. One, rest, three, rest, one and two, three, four, and one, rest, three, rest, one and two, three, four, and one, rest, three, rest, one and two, 
and one. And so you can see I've translated this into numbers. So these two quarter notes both have durations of two because when you add the quarter note with the rest, it, it equals to two. This quarter note here has a duration of 2.5 because the quarter note has a duration of one and the dotted quarter rest has a duration of 1.5. And when we add those two together, we get 2.5. And I just chose to make this repeat 15 times. You can decide however many you want. Let's take a look at this third example. So you can play two rhythms at the same time by highlighting all of this and pressing shift return. And this is really interesting because we can combine two instruments, right? So this is instrument E, this is instrument C, right? So instrument E is the tambourine, instrument C is a cowbell. And I also added an extra feature here. T equals tempo clock. So for example, this has a tempo of 60 beats per minute. Why? Because we did not specify the tempo, the computer is going to default to 60 beats per minute. What does that mean? That means that each beat lasts one second because there are 60 seconds in a minute. So 60 beats per minute would mean there's a beat of one second long. Now, sometimes I don't always want a tempo to be 60 beats per minute. Some that's a little bit slow. So in this example, I've made it so that the tempo is 144 beats per minute. So each beat in this case lasts a little bit less than half of a second. Let's listen to what this sounds like. I'm gonna highlight, oh, I'm gonna highlight all of this. Let's take a look at what this looks like in Western notation. So you have two different drums playing at the same time. And what we hear is kind of a complicated rhythm with two different types of sounds. When these two contrasting rhythms play at the same time, what results in our ear is called a cross rhythm or a polyrhythm. This kind of makes me move my body in a way more so than these simpler versions. So I highly recommend experimenting with playing different cross rhythm, different rhythms at the same time. This is a great tool that you can use on Super Collider where you can not just play two rhythms at the same time, but you could play I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? This is a computer software. So you could create some really complicated things, throw in those rhythms and just hear what it sounds like. A lot of African and Latin music is based on this concept of cross rhythm or polyrhythm. In Latin music, there are a ton of different sorts of rhythmic patterns, so many, that I actually created an appendix of all of the different Latin rhythms that are available. Um, now, Latin music uses a lot more instruments than just these instruments that I've made recording. So what you're gonna hear is a little bit more basic than the actual Latin rhythm that you might hear Tito Puente play. But I've created kind of a basic appendix of not all, but some. I would like to credit Rick Mattingly for coming up with these rhythms. He um, wrote them down in Western notation, but I have translated them into super collider notation. If you want to learn more about drum patterns, I recommend All About Drums, a fun and simple guide to playing drums by Rick Mattingly, published by Hal Leonard. There are a ton of different Latin rhythms, right? So rumba, cha-cha, what else? Mambo, New York, Mozambique, Songo, Nenego, and, and so on, bossa nova. I recommend checking out what these other rhythms are doing because these are rhythms that people like to listen to, rhythms that people like to dance to, and this is a good way of learning more about Latin American music.
now that we've looked at different examples of how to translate Western notation into super collider numbers, let's look at some more complicated prompts. So first, I gave you some basic exercises. This exercise, you're asked to translate it into musical notation. In this case, we have Western musical notation. And you can see I've chosen some Latin rhythms here, and I want you to translate it into super collider and see if you get the same rhythm. There is some interesting syncopation here. And then I want you to create your own rhythmic pattern. So access your creative thinking. And I have five different questions that might get the creative juices flowing. We've already talked about how you could write two rhythmic sequences and play simultaneously. Maybe try three now. After you've created your interesting rhythmic pattern, I think it's very important to go back and reflect on the mathematics that you use. So here are some probing questions. First of all, if we wanted to create a song with the same rhythms, but the tempo that's twice as fast, what do we need to do? Another question, what roles do addition, multiplication, and division play in rhythm? And then finally, this question makes us think a little bit about the commutative property in math, right? The commutative property states that A plus B equals B plus A, right? A times B is equal to B times A, but not everything is commutative in math. For example, A divided by B is not the same thing as B divided by A. So I want to know, is music, are musical rhythms communicative? If you divide a rhythm in half and then you divide that note again into thirds, will you get the same rhythm as if you divide that original note into thirds and then divide it into halves? I hope that you enjoy and learn a lot from this lesson that explores the connection between musical rhythm and mathematics.